the series on Java tutorial for beginners. So far we have seen how to set up our system to write Java programs as well as how to set up our ID to make it more efficient and friendly for code writing. Now in today's video we are going to talk about variables and primitive data types. In any programming language when you are dealing with some variables to hold a particular value you need to know how to create those variables, what is the syntax for writing those variables, as well as what are the allowed data types of that particular language. So before we jump on further, we'll be taking a look at the same. Now, variable is a named location that is used to store a particular value. Let's say you want to store your name. So you need a variable created which will store the name. Or you want to store the age of a person. Again, you need a variable that will hold that value. So a variable in Java is case sensitive, which means that if you write a uppercase name, variable name, it will be different from the lowercase variable name. So you need to be sure about what kind of variable name you are giving and then use the same variable name in the same case everywhere else in the program. So. So as you see on the screen, we have taken two examples, string, first name. Now in the first example here, our T is small, while in the second, our T is capital. So both these variable names are two different variable names for Java, since Java is case sensitive. So whenever you are giving a name, make sure what your name you are giving and use the same case elsewhere in the program. Now when you do this, this is called declaration. You are declaring a variable for your program. So this declaration then could be x, y variable name or you can give a variable name age or you can give a variable name as weight. So all these variable names are fairly valid in Java. What I'll recommend is Instead of using variable names like x and y that don't convey any meaning, try to use variable names that explain what that variable can hold or is going to hold. So for example, age clearly tells you that this variable is going to hold the age or weight. It tells you that this variable is going to hold weight. So try to make your variable names as readable as possible because that will help you while you are debugging your programs, okay? So variable is basically a location name, a memory location name where you put some value, say 56. So this is the name of the memory location where you are storing the value 56. Now, the first line is just the declaration of the variable name, wherein you give the data type, what kind of data value this variable is storing. We'll take an in-depth look into data type in a short while. So our first name, the name of a person is going to be a string. So we gave the data type string and then we gave the variable name first name. So this statement is called a declaration statement. Now when you want to assign a value to your variable that is called a assignment statement. So you just give the variable name and the string that it is going to hold. Now, when you want to print a variable, you use the same system.out.println, but then when you give the variable name inside, you don't have to give quotes. So as you remember in our previous program, when we printed a string on the screen, we printed it inside quotes. But when you are printing a variable name, it doesn't have to be inside quotes. So every language has some naming conventions to give the name of variables. So in Java, a variable name can have alphabets, underscore, or the dollar sign. So it should start with either of these. Now, when you give the first letter this, the rest of the letters can also contain digits from 0 to 9. Now, we have already discussed that the variable name has to be case sensitive and we cannot use keywords as variable names. So for example, let's see some valid variable names. So age is valid, again weight is valid, you can have underscore age 
29 you can have dollar age 29 you can not have 023 this is not a valid variable name since it is not starting with an alphabet or underscore or dollar however if you have first letter as variable name say alphabet say x and then you have 023 this is a valid variable name now the last point that we saw here is that we cannot use keywords as variable names in java so what are keywords now keywords are some predefined names that a language uses to create the program syntax so there is a worldwide list of keywords that are reserved words for the java programming language but you don't have to mug them up when you keep practicing and writing your programs you'll clearly see the highlighted areas where you can find out that this is a keyword or not these keywords are also used by the compiler to parse your program structure it helps understand the compiler what is happening where okay now there's this keyword list so as you see on the screen this is the java language keyword list you have public private new all these are the java keywords so whenever you are creating a variable name you cannot use any of these keywords now moving back now before we move further let me show you some quick examples here so this is as you see our first program that we wrote now inside this when you have to declare a variable let's say you have to declare a variable to store the age so we say int age now this statement that's it is a variable name declaration now you can declare multiple variables in the same line so let's say weight height so here we have declared multiple variables in the same line you can also declare them in different lines but when you're declaring multiple variables which have the same data type it's ideally okay to do this in the same line now assignment of values so you see a little yellow line right here down so you can click on this and check what the issue is the value of local variable weight is not used so when you declare a variable and you don't use it in your program you'll see this slight yellow line appearing under those variable names even if you don't use it your program will work fine but ideally it is not a good practice to declare a variable and then not use it so let's just say age 25 weight let's say 50 and height let's say 162 all right now these are the assignment statements we are assigning a value to the variable that we have created now to print this we simply have to write this and give the variable name inside age like you see here we do it in quotes when we are printing a string we give it in quotes but if we are giving a variable name we just give the variable name so as soon as you use this age in your program you see that the underline that was coming under this age variable is disappeared now if you have to print multiple variables wait So this will print all three of these variables on your screen so let's just save and run so now if you have to print multiple variables all you have to do is give a comma separated list of variables to be printed age weight and height all right so now if you run this program you'll see the age printed on the screen all right 25 and then followed by our println statements that we already gave so this is your basic variable declaration in use now this variable names can be given as per the rules that we have just seen now if you want some variable to be accessible to your whole class not just method so when you declare a variable inside a particular method let's say we defined age weight and height inside the method main 
these variables will be used only inside this particular function. If you have more than one function in your file and you want some variable to be used in all of those functions throughout your class, you have to declare it before starting your main function at the top right here. Okay. So the syntax for that again is pretty simple. You start with static, again give the data type name. Let's say this time say age underscore two. Okay and initialize it to some value let's say 27. Now you can very well use this h2 although it is declared outside of the function main you can use this inside this function. So if we print here age underscore 2 it will give us 27. See so the variable that you declare outside will be accessible in all the functions that you write in your program. Also, there is this concept of final variables. Final variables are the variables that you want to remain, hold the same value throughout the program. So if you have to declare any final variable whose value will not change through the entire course of your program, you say final and you say whatever the data type it is. Give it some value, let's say pi. Now it is a common practice to give all capital letters name to a constant variable. So let's say 3.14. So this declared a final variable in your program. Now again, so now you can go ahead and print it out. So just say control S and run this. So you get 3.14 in your output. So this is variable name declaration, fairly simple. Also at this point, I would like to say one thing. So this is one line, right? And the end of the line is marked by colon. So if you write it like this, or you write it like this, it's all good. It will still work fine. The compiler will compile this line and you'll get the exact same output. But for the ease of reading and understanding your program, we try to keep it line by line. Similarly, this is also a fair enough practice. Even when you do this, you write the whole code in a single line. This will also work as good as it worked before. But then this becomes very difficult to read and find an error or find where what is declared. So for best practices, we make sure that our code is properly indented always. So just say control S since we have given a shortcut at save that our program will be indented properly whenever we hit save, it's automatically indented. All right. Now let's move back to our slide and see further what we have. So as we discussed class variables also known as static member variables are the variables that we declare above our functions. They are not part of any function. There's only one copy of that variable that is shared with all instances of that class. So every time you create an instance of class, there will be one copy made which will be shared among all the instances. And if changes are made to that variable, all other instances will see the affected changes. Okay, so that's for class variables. Now moving on to primitive data types. So to hold all the different values, Java has given us some primitive data types as you see on this table on screen. So we have a Boolean. If there is some value that has only true or false, we create it as a Boolean. We have a byte that is two's complement integer. So you can get all this data here. We have char to hold any character value. So it's 16 bits Unicode character. You can assign small a, capital A, all those values to your char variables. Then again, in integers, we start with short. So it is the smallest integral value possible. Then we have int 32 bits, long is hold 64 bit value, float and double are the decimal point values holder. So if there is a value that doesn't have a decimal point like age, you can create an int 
to store that value but if there is some price or something that might have a decimal point you better create it as float or double okay so these are the primitive data types that we'll keep using uh, throughout our program practice now the primitive data types have certain range the minimum and maximum value that can be stored in the particular primitive data type so byte ranges from minus 128 to 127 the short ranges from minus 3 to 768 to 3 to 767 and so forth you get the minimum and maximum value now if you want to at any point of time check the min maximum value there is another way also to do it so let's say we create an integer let's say big value and we want to initialize the maximum value that the integer can hold to this big value so we give integer now this is the wrapper class it's wrapper class of int data type starts with the capital i and you have to type in full integer okay wrapper classes will discuss further in detail but this is to explain to you how you can initialize the maximum value of integer so you say integer dot max underscore value all right now if you print this big value you'll see the maximum value stored so you see right here 21474836474 the maximum integer value for this machine is right here typed out so you can check the same way for float double and all other data types all right now moving back so now that we have seen variables and data types now we come to conversion you can convert one data type to another in java so there are certain implicit conversions for which you don't have to specify anything and there are some explicit conversions for which you have to change the syntax a bit for one data type to fit into another so as part of implicit conversions let's say you have a char c that is initialized to the alphabet a now if the c variable can be converted to int all you have to do is just say int k is equals to c nothing else you create a new variable k data type int and assign c into it although char holds character and int holds integer this is a fairly correct statement similarly long float double but there are certain explicit conversions also that we'll come to for now a char can be implicitly converted to int long float or a double if the range of value of first type is a subset of range of value of second type so the range that character can hold is a subset of int long float so it can be assigned similarly you can assign an int variable to a float or a long or a double or you can assign a float variable to a double since the size of float is greater than double so you can come back to this chart and see int can be assigned to all these long float double implicitly now long again can be assigned to the further similarly float can be assigned to double implicitly okay for the explicit conversions when you explicitly have to convert some variable to another it is known as casting in java type casting at some places you might hear so the name of the type to which you want the value to be converted is given in the parenthesis right in front of the variable so as you see here we want this double to be converted to an integer now integers can only hold numbers without decimal points so when you explicitly say that i want a decimal point value to be converted to integer the, what the conversion does is it loses this value 0.6 so when you print k you will only get 5 so in explicit conversions there is mostly some data loss happening similarly you can say you want to convert this decimal double value to a short value so you multiply it by 2 and then you move it to short value now you can also convert your primitive variables to string which again is fairly simple as you see on the screen if you want to convert it to a byte to a string so you just say byte 
this again is the wrapper class for data type byte byte dot to string so this dot to string function will convert your byte value to a string value similarly if you have to convert a short value to string you say short the data wrapper class dot to string and convert now integers wrapper class has the full name integer not just int so you give the whole name dot to string and similarly for the rest Likewise, if you have to convert a string to primitive variable, you say integer dot parse int and give the string variable inside. So this syntax right here, integer dot parse int and the string variable inside will convert your string value to the integer and hold it in this variable string to int. Similarly for short, just say short dot parse short and give the string. So this is to convert your primitive variables to string. Now this is all about your data types and variable names. Before we close off, I would like to also discuss about escape sequences. So escape characters are the characters that have some special meaning attached to them. So they are the symbols which when given in your statements will do the exact function that they are meant to do. So there are, this is the list of all the escaped characters. Slash B when you give, it will do a backspace. Slash N is a new line. Slash T will give you a tab. So these are all generally used when you have to do formatted outputs. So you want a tab, you just give a slash T. Or you want a new line, you give a slash N. Similarly, form feed, double quote, single quote, etc. Let me just quickly show you. So let's say this is our program. Uh, here we are printing, hi, this is our first Java program in a single line. Let's say we don't want that. We want this to be printed in the other line after hi. So you just add the new line escape sequence here, slash n. And this will automatically move your part of the string after this to the next line. Now similarly, if let's say we want more space between ready for some fun. So we add a tab here. So now this will print after a tab. Let's save and see the output. See, hi, this is moved to the next line. And here, as you can see, the extra space has come because of the back tab escape sequence. All right, so we are done with the session today. Practice more with the different, different data types. See how they are used to print addition subtractions. More of that, which we'll see in our next upcoming video. So keep practicing and thank you for watching.